nice to meet you. Thank you. Welcome to Farm Smart. Wow, you're welcome to Itungo Pastures. Yes, my name is Richard Takaman and welcome to Farm Smart. In today's Farm Smart, we are going to be looking at pastures mm. in general. Mm. Pastures entails rabbits, goats, cows, whatever, just name it. And we are going to be covering from the from the start from growing mm. to uh, uh, up to the finished product. Yes. Move with us. And we are now in the garden, Farm Smart, as it says. And with me, I have a special guest from all the way from Wakiso. First, introduce yourself, Mr. Wow, thank you so much. I'm called Piso Nusinje from Itungo Pastures. And we are going to be showcasing how you can plant Napier. From Napier, we're going to show you how it germinates until you see how we make silage out of it. Yes, Mr. Before, yes. before you tell us how you start planting, first tell us how did you come up with this garden? Wow. Pastel as a brief. Oh, about when, you, when you're doing uh, pastures, you know very well you have got to do first plowing, then second plowing. So, this stage right now, it is on uh, the last stage of last plowing. So, as you can see now, the, long, the, the, the soils are very fine, very, very, very fine, and they are ready to be planted with our seed. Yes, after establishing the land, we have seen your it is well prepared. Yes. So tell us, what do we start with? Uh, right now, we are going to do be showcasing our viewers, how, our farmers and dear clients, how we can plant Napier, how we can plant Napier in lines so that we can achieve our, our silage very well at the end of the day. First of all, where do you get this Napier from? Uh, we have from our mother garden. From mother garden? Uh, right? Yes, our mother garden, you cut them very well. Now it's a ready seed for planting. Wow, so now yes. take us through the process. Wow. So for, for those people who are outside there, you have never planted any Napier and you want it to be looking very nice, as I have said, you first do first plowing, second plowing, as you have seen, by garden. Then from there, you, there are many ways of planting, but me, I'm going to use this cut tool uh, to make for me lines, after making lines, then I plant. Please, viewers, just look as I'm saying. It has got from here to here, it's two feet. From here to here, it's two feet in lines. And this is how we do it. Okay, then from there, it's very easy. From here, it's very, very easy. The lines are already there. These are two nodes. For those people who don't know nodes, this is one node, two, three. I'll make sure the first two are inside at the slant. So these are our lines. Uh, the first two should be inside the land. Uh, you see? Our lines are already. Uh, you see? Very easy. You see, at the slant at the slant. From there, you see, you see, finish like that. I have finished now planting my napier in lines. Yes, yes in planting napier, do you, do you have like to dig like specific size of holes or you just... Yes, yes. As you see this machine, this mm. cut tool of mine was helping me to put lines. Yeah, because I, ju I just saw you passed on top. Yes. Now that the soils are good, okay, and we have done all the first plowing, second plowing, so the soils are now good. Mm. So putting, you don't need to dig. Many people who don't have this tool, they can use ropes. Okay. You can just put a rope and then you plant in lines. Why are we planting in lines? becomes very easy for harvesting. It becomes very easy for when you're removing the weed. And then to know the population of the plants that we have planted. And here I have just finished. Yes, as we can see, everything grows in a specific type of soil. So is there a specific type of soil that... Actually, very well? actually this napier doesn't need any specifics. As long as you have got water, if you don't have water, then you can irrigate. But in some dry areas, it's not good to plant um, some of these pastures. But Napier, all over Uganda, it can grow very, very well. And if you have the land that is so acidic, 
then you can use some manure. Yes. But for us here, the, lo the land is good, so we don't need any other additive. We are going to put manure maybe for the second cutting, okay. but for the first, it's good. There's no need of watering? Yes, no need of watering. We are in the rain season now. Okay. It has started. Mm. Yes. Yes, our dear viewers, you have seen how we plant Napier. So we are going to see, we are going to see how 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 a Napier germinates. Yes, as you can see, this is our Napier has germinated, but Mister is going to be explaining to us how which stage is this. Tell us, please. It's now a month. Then after a month, it is where we are going to wait for another two months and it is ready for making silage from here. But here we are we're just showcasing after planting in lines, they have now germinated after a month here, and it looks very well, it's very, very, very well. That's the advantage of planting this. For the viewers who don't know this kind of type, it's called Pak Chong Nepia, or in English it's called Super Nepia. It is from Thailand. It is one of the best Nepia you can ever get in Uganda. Very high protein, very high succulent, good for diary, cows, goats, sheep, name it, here to go. Yes, first tell us, what do you do in this, in this part? In this part? Yeah. Now, as you can see, what it is, is required? Now it is, uh, it is already weeded, but if there was like weed, we were going to remove some weed. But since the, the garden is clear, we are not going to weeding. From here, we are going to wait for our two months, then we cut. We leave it after a day for withering. Then we put in a machine and make silage. Do we need like, to add in some sprays or what? Is no, they, 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 most of the pastures, they mm. don't need uh, sprays and all that. It's a natural thing here. Once you manure, you remove weed, you're good to go. Yes. So for you, have animals, you have goats, you have cows, you have sheep, and you're in a small acreage of land. Here we are targeting those farmers on a small plot of land. This is good for them. So there is this process when, when, when pasture is scarce. Can yes. someone feed these ones? Yes, 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 you can, you can. They this is good, really, it's good. Okay. Especially when you're in dry season and here from here after two months, we are going to cut. Maybe what people don't know, this is, has a regrowth. Like you cut, it sprout back. You cut, it sprout back. It's not like the other maize. Maize, you cut once and then you go and plant. But for this one, you cut, it comes back. Are there any hindrances or anything that affects this? No, apart mm. from maybe weeding. If it's uh, too much weed, it can affect its uh, productivity. But if there is no weed, it's good. It's a, it remains a, a pasture. No diseases? No like... diseases. This, this particular, this particular okay. has no diseases. Okay. That's why we are telling people to come and uh, get this, themselves this, most of these cuttings. Because it's a disease free. Yes. Yes, as you can see, it's a nice display. Yes. Well organized and well germinated. So tell us, which type of pasture is this? Wow, this is called the Pak Chong, Super Nepia, and it's one of the leading Nepia pasture types we have in Uganda. There are many, however, there are many. There is Kakamega 1, there is Kakamega 2, Namrongi, Sugar Nepia, name them. But the best thing for this one, it is hairless. Hairless, I mean, you can, hmm? does not have any not hairs, okay? Mm. So when you have workers, the workers can be freely come here without hair. That is number one. Number two, it has got high protein content, mm. meaning that if you have cows, goats, you're going to get huge, huge, huge kind of milk production and meat, beef production because of this. Yes. Yes, do, we, do, do they go like in specific areas or? Whether you're in a valley, whether you're in a waterlogged area, whether you're like in Kabong, Ka, or some parts of that Kato Corridor, Ankori Dry Masaka Corridor, you can, because this Napier is good. It does not, uh, if it, unless if it is, maybe it's too much water, but in any other place it can go there. So in Uganda, which one is most grown? Which one favors most farmers? Okay. This one, mm. it, this, this Pak Chong, it's a new thing. It's not that it's most grown in Uganda. Yes. Farmers are now now embracing it. It's a new thing in Uganda, but farmers are embracing it. Okay. Yes. So, like, if, if I can ask, what makes it so unique about from, from others? Because of the advantages we have seen. First of all, it is mm. hairless. 
Second, it has got high protein. Third, it has got high biomass. Biomass, we mean you, you harvest in something, like a small acreage of land, but you get huge, 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 huge um, massive production. So it is specifically for those people who have got one acre, half an acre, quarter an acre. If you're in Bujiri, if you're in Iganga, if you're in Churhura, if you're in uh, Ntungamo, for large and small can have this. So you've seen this is most grown by most farmers and it has, it has good advantages. That's why, most, that's why most farmers love it. He said it is hairless, so it, can, it, it doesn't affect you if you try to move around or when you're like harvesting it, so it doesn't affect you. So from here, we have seen how it germinates and he has explained how you take care of it and how you maintain it. So from here, we're going to the next stage. Now you're going to plant for hay. So, and Mr. is going to be explaining us what's the name of these two products. Because I can see there are two different products. So tell us, I can see these are two different products. Wow. Hey, first explain to us. Okay. So this is our famous Chloris Guyana, um, in English, Rhodes grass, and it's good for hay. Now, these are beans, well, we can call them legumes. This is, for this case, this is called Central Sema. Why am I having two? Yes, this one is for carbohydrates. This one is for proteins. So we are going to mix proteins, which are centrosema, mix with Chloris Guyana, which is for carbohydrates. At the end of the day, we are going to be getting hay, a complete hay, okay? Complete hay, which has got both carbohydrates and proteins, as you're going to see. Why is it, why is it that for nipples you plant only one product and then this one, for nipia you plant uh, For nipia, it's a, it's a stand alone. It is silage, because when we are going to make silage, at the end of it all, we are going to mix some other things. Okay. But for hay, mm. for our hay to be productive and good, that's how we are mixing from the start. What farmers, they don't know this. Most cases, they normally plant only this. When you're planting only across Guyana, you're giving your animals only carbohydrates. However, we are now introducing legumes. So you're planting both, planting both carbohydrates and proteins on the same line as you're going to see. So what do you put first? You put them together? No, together. We are going to mix. Actually, bring. Okay, we go so you first get, get <coughs> assume that this is where we are going to mix from. You don't need to dig any No, actually what? we should ha be having like um, a tarpaulin. But since we don't have a tarpaulin, okay, I can bring. Let me, you need something like this. This is our tarpaulin. Mm. You get this. This is cross Guyana. Cross Guyana. Okay. Mix with the beans and you mix you mix, you the mix. The beans don't have a specific name. No, this is called centrosema. Okay, yeah. then you get land, soil, fine soil, you put. Why are you putting soils? These seeds are fluffy, they are moving. So when you put soil, okay, putting soil, both beans, in this case, legumes, centrosema, and cross Guyana, to mix them, and we are going to plant in our lines together, as you can see. So we are mixing, 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 and it's now done. From here, we are going to plant. Remember, we plant in the same lines as we have seen. Mm. Let me get my tool and show our viewers. Okay. So get your tool, as you can see, press it. For the viewers outside there, for you to plant this, the land has to be uh, passed through, has passed through, first plowing, second plowing. It must be clean. As you can see, it is clean, free from weed, okay? Now from there, you get this, 
If you don't have this, you can imp imp improvise and do using a hoe. But for my case, I have this. It's going to put lines. Wow. For dear viewers, as you can see, these are my three lines ready to be planted. From there, you get your seed, already mixed seed, beans plus Christ Guyana plus soil. And then you come and put in your lines, in your lines, in your lines, okay? In your lines. Mm. Okay? Yes. And a mixture of soil and beans. Uh, I'm done. If you're expecting rain, you might not cover. But since we are not expecting rains, we are going to add very thinly soil on top of this. So you get any soil and put, okay? Any soil and put. Do you have to use hands? Because if yeah, you're you planting a very big farm. Eh? Yeah, many, many people have got rollers. Okay. You can get a roller and roll it. If you don't have a roller, you can get like, um, you can get like um, a drum, then you can roll it on top. Oh, yeah, many, they want to use like 10, 10 people. You get some small, 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 and then you put, you put. So that one, it is when we are using this machine, okay? This cut tool here, yes. okay? But there are some people outside there who don't have this. How can they do it? They can also use a hoe. A hoe. You put a rope, put a rope here, up to there. Then on the rope, then you put like a small, okay? Remember, we are planting two feet from line. This is one, two. You also do your line. Okay? After doing it very well, get your, your seed. Come to your lines. Ah. After, get soil and, and cover. Dear viewers, where have I lied? This is the thing. And from there, you wait for seven days, 13 days, your pasture is going to germinate. Remember to use certified seed from people who are certified, not masquerading around. Because you have done your soils very well, you don't want to go and put fake seed, okay? Put the rightful seed, and together we can develop farming as well. One thing I've witnessed here, the, the spacing is two feet. Yes. Always have to measure two feet. When you don't have this machine, how do you call this machine? This is a tool, a planting tool. A planting tool. Mm. Yes, when you don't have the planting tool, you have to use a hole, but you have to put a rope. A rope, yeah. so that you can measure very well and make good straight lines. Yeah. Yes. Remember, this is farm smart. You have to farm smart for you to get profit. I want you to notice that. Yes. yes, and farming smart means someone is organized. So from here, we are going to see how they germinate. The germination of hay. Yes. Good. Let's go. Yes, as you can see, these are the beans, the ones you have just seen there, we have, we have just planted. And, it, and then these are the seeds. These are the seeds, you, you may think it is grass, but these are the seeds that you have planted. So, Mr. you're going to explain to us this stage yes. and how it comes, to, how it germinates up to this stage. Wow. So, our dear, good, good, good viewers of Smart TV, remember always to farm smart. So, where we are right now, this is our grown up Cross Guyana. It's called Guyana mixed with our beans. If you remember where we started, these are our beans, as you see, call them legumes. And this is our grown up Chloris Guyana. And it's now past three months. 
good months and as you can see it's ready for harvesting okay the reason why we put these legumes remember i told you they fix nitrogen in the soils they add um, protein to our grasses and it's like a cover crop okay they suppress all the weed for example here as i stand there is no any other weed apart from our grasses yes we are going to cut it because we are going to now for processing very addition and you're going to see from here we have cut after cutting we are going to leave for three days turning them remember we do hay when sun shines so this one is for good hay we are going to cut it after three days we bale it we put it in our hay balers after there we store why are we storing it in case there is a dry season we shall be using our hay for those people who don't want, who don't have animals, they can still bear it and sell it. For the youth who is outside there, for the woman, a man who is unemployed, okay? I want you to come and learn how this thing is done. Such so that together we can produce more hay. There is too much demand for hay in Uganda, okay? The population has increased with reduced, you know, land. So let us do this hay. We are going to be selling it in the whole of Western region, Central and Western. Because of this climate, ch climate change, together we can do this and get out of poverty. Yes, yes the farmer mm. the farmer outside there would like to know, because you have now come, this is three months. Yes. So the farmer would like to know, growing up to, up to, to three months, yes. what do you have to do wow. to take care after, of them? Um, after planting, mm. after planting, you wait for like a month. If there is weed, mm. you weed. Okay, remember, someone would ask me, how do you weed since this one? You no, know, for pastures, you have to weed. You've got to weed after one month. The good thing with this cross, Guyana, you weed once. Then after, you will never, ever weed again. Why? Because these legumes, the legumes which you have planted alongside with this, they would suppress any, any cow weed that is coming up. Okay. Yes. So from there, that's the process over. You will be cutting, cutting up to four, up to five, up to six years. Okay, that's why I'm enticing people to come and plant this grass. It is better than maybe maize. If you have one acre of maize and one acre of this, and you want to sell, you're not interested in animals, you're interested in selling. Someone who has done hay, okay, he's going to get much, much more money, more profit compared to someone who has done maize on the same acreage of land. Then that's why we are here show you this so what prevents them from other weeds from going from here the the, the, the these um these the, regimes the these regimes eh? okay. it's a cover crop so they will suppress any other weed that might come okay. yes so that keeps it safe. now here this is money now this is i'm talking about money i will never weed again i will be cutting every two months remember for the first time it is three months subsequent two months, two months. regrowth Regrowth, exactly. Okay. It, it continues regrowth, regrowing, regrowing, regrowing. Up two months, you cut two months. So it means that okay. after one year, you'll be harvesting this, like five to six, five like in uh, drought areas, seven like in um, wet areas, like in central here. Yes. yes. Before before we leave this stage, yeah? yes. first first advise some farmers out there because most most farmers don't know about this. Mm. They want to grow their own pasture. Mm. So first encourage someone and tell mm. someone out there. Wow. The good thing our dear good pasture. farmers, our dear good farmers, if you're outside there, you're interested in goats, you're interested in cows, you're interested in uh, in in sheep, you're interested in doing beef, you want to do diary. This is your chance to come and we teach you. How you can make this preserve and make hay, how you can grow napier and get silage, how you can grow sugar graze. As we are going to see, by the way, we don't have, um, we are having many, many, many types of pastures. Why am I preferring this one? This one, it is more preferred because it is weather friendly. If you are outside there, you want to get knowledge on how you can preserve this, you're in the right place. Yes. So tell us, are there any challenges mm. or any difficulties mm. that, that, that someone goes through when growing yeah. these pastures? Yeah, there is, uh, when you land on poor seeds, as I'm saying, yes. uh, you, you buy seed which is not good, or you, you plant this pasture when it is dry season, it's not going to germinate, or you plant deeper, it's also not going to germinate, yes. 
oh, you plant, there are some farmers who think that pastures, you don't weed, you don't, they, they get this a bush and then start broadcasting. It's not going to germinate. You have got, but once you do things rightly, you do first plowing, second plowing, then you, you get the right full seed, the right weather. I'm telling you, my brother, you're going to have something. Yeah. Yes. Now, going on the joy side, you know, anything we do, we targeting some money, targeting yeah. something. Mm -hmm. So, first tell us, outside there, how is the market? Wow, the market for, you know, this grass is, is good. It is my purpose. Yes. You can, uh, in my purpose, in a way that you can feed your cows. You can harvest these seeds, okay? Yes. You can harvest these seeds and sell seeds. You can cut this grass, bale it, and sell it as bell, yes. okay? So in the Sudan, they need. In Northern Uganda, we need it. In central here, urban areas, there is massive demand for hay in Uganda. However, people are still, you know, are still looking at the traditional cash crops and the traditional crops like maize, like ginats, not knowing that also this one. And the reason why we are here to tell them that, however, now land, we don't have that land for free range anymore. People can go for, 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 for indoors, uh, zero grazing, and have this and sell. Yes, please. Yes, besides making hay and sellage, mm. can someone feed animals from this? Uh, yeah, it can also go for free range. Mm. You can allow your animals to go there for free range. That is after like five months. Or you can cut, you can cut, wither, and feed Which your cows. Which one is better? Uh, like of course, making hay is good. Then. Making hay is good. Uh, because you're protecting your, your garden from being trampled over. Okay. Yes. Yo, so now tell us, if you are to make silage, mm. do you have to pick like the whole garden or how? Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to. For hay, you have to cut everything. Mm. And cut moreover, everything. it has to be dry season. No, it has to be dry season. You cut hay when the sun shines. Once the rain rains on it, then it's not going to be good silage. Because Rather good hay. Right now I can see they are green. So uh, yes. are they, I ca can I harvest them like this? And uh, you can harvest them. it. You harvest it and make silage if you want to make silage, but this one is more of hay. Mm. So harvest it after the third day. It's already dry, pale green. Put it in our boxes as you're going to see. If you're going to sell, sell. If you don't have market, go in my box. Say, Usinje, Itungo, yeah. I have hay. That's the reason why we are here. Yes. So tell us, of what advantage is this to the animals? Oh, Better this is... Um, grass or oh, okay, of course, planted pastures are good. Yeah. This is planted meat, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So they planted meat. Yeah. yeah. Now, the, the, the disadvantage of uh, natural pastures is that you, you get less herbage. This one planted pastures, you get more herbage. herbage. That is advantage number one. Mm -hmm. Then for the animals, the animals, they are going to grow fat, give you milk, because they are going to eat and get satisfied. But the grasses which are not planted, they are not, uh, they eat less, and then less milk, less beef. Yes. So I see some people giving animals this, how do they call it, bisagazi? Eh, bisagazi, yes. Bisagazi. Yes. So how, how different is bisagazi from this? Yes, bisagazi, they are good at for silage. Mm. This is good for hay. For hay. However, there are sagas which are less, you know, less protein, mm. like this, uh, this natural, natural sagas, which, which have got hairs. Those are less protein, less, and I tell my dear viewers not to go for those. Always come for the good, improved seeds, such that you, 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 you dig in a small acreage of land, but you harvest a lot. Yes, thank you so much. This is oh. good work so far. I've really enjoyed <laughs> You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> I have seen something big. Yes, yes the farmer, for the farmers out there, he has explained a lot. And they are taught us a lot. So it is up to you to, it's, it's up to, you to decide which way to go. Mm -hmm.